All right, guys. So this is going to be my first post podcast style. Um, it'll be fun. We'll talk to a lot of people that work in sports. And uh, today I'm by myself. I don't have a guest. I usually will have one. So today we're going to talk about um, my profession, which is professional basketball player. Um, most of you probably think of professional basketball players as in the NBA, but not everybody can play in the NBA. There's only 30 teams, 400, 500 jobs, something like that. So, you know, guys that are right on that fringe or that fall outside of that 500 guy category um, are usually overseas. I'm sure you watch guys in college that you, you know, become a fan of that graduate and you're kind of like, man, what happened to those guys? Like, did they go to the NBA? What, what happened? And um, a lot of times those guys are playing basketball overseas. Uh, overseas can mean in Canada, South America, China, uh, leagues in Europe, Africa. So there's, it's a global market. You can play all over the place. Uh, all the other countries, you know, have their own NBAs. They have their own leagues. Uh, sometimes they have two divisions, three divisions. You know, they'll have their top league, the second league, the third league. So kind of like how the NBA has their G League, um, overseas uh, markets are the same. So uh, there's a lot of places to play. Um, and you're probably like, how do you even get overseas? Like, how does that work? It's really similar to going to the NBA. Basically, your senior year of college or whenever you're leaving college, agents, scouts, coaches are watching games. If you play at a really high level Division One school and you're a good player, you know, 99.9% .9 of your games are being watched by somebody in the NBA, somebody in the overseas uh, industry, you know, whether that's an agent, scout, or a coach. So you have a lot of eyes on you. Now, if you're like me, that played at a small school. I played at a Division II school, and I played with a lot of guys overseas that played at small schools, D3, uh, D2, um, you know, low major D1, um, NAIA, whatever. Those guys usually don't have a lot of eyes on them, but if you're a really elite player or you have a lot of team success, you make it far run in like a national tournament, you know, agents will watch those games and try to find some like underrated guys to sign. And what usually happens is, you know, they come up to you and just say, hey, you know, Will, uh, we watched you play. We like you. We think you're good enough to be a pro. Uh, we'd like to sign you. You know, the NBA is a little bit out of reach for you at the moment, but we might can get you a job overseas. And that's kind of how it starts. Um, a little bit about, you know, overseas contracts, you know. Uh, usually it's like a nine to 10 month contract. That's kind of the standard. Um, of course, there's, you know, more and less, I know. But the usual thing is nine to 10 months, you get paid once a month. So, you know, here in the States and corporate America, let's say you get paid, you know, every two weeks, uh, direct deposit to your bank. But in Europe and in Africa where I'm playing now and in a lot of other places that I've heard from my friends and other players have told me, it's usually one uh, salary per month. So you get paid once per month. Um, and you live in that country, you know, for those nine and 10 months and you play the schedule, you, you know, a, a long schedule. Sometimes you play one game a week, sometimes two, um, sometimes you practice twice a day. Sometimes you practice once a day. So it's a full-time schedule. I mean, it's not a nine to five. You do have more time, uh, to yourself, you know, at in afternoons or, you know, random Tuesday mornings if you have the morning off. So, you know, you feel like you're not, you know, doing a nine to five desk job. But you are working a lot. You don't have much time off. You know, you're not like going out on vacation on the weekends. So you do usually work six days a week, um, you know, and play once a week. So it is a lot. It's a lot. It's a full time job. So I can give you kind of like a day in the life, but I'll make it like a week. So like a week in the life of a professional basketball player that's that's overseas. So. You'll say you have a game Saturday. So you had shoot around Saturday morning, maybe. Um, the game was Saturday. You played the game. Um, Sunday's probably off. On your off day, maybe like you hang with your, your, your boys from the team, um, or you go out to eat, or you do you walk around the city. You know, you do something cool on Sunday, maybe rest up. Um, Monday, you got practice. You know, if your team likes to practice twice a day, you know, you'll wake up in the morning, eat breakfast, go to practice, come home, eat lunch. A lot of guys take naps. I talk to a lot of guys that like study, uh, do some other things in that afternoon between lunch and uh, their second practice. So you can kind of get creative there. Um, then, you know, you go to practice and you come home. It's probably dinner time. And then you go to sleep and you wake up and do it all over again. So, <laughs> you know, it's not uh, not glamorous, but, you know, you're doing what you love, of course. Um, so that is a great part of it. All right. So one question I'm going to ask, like almost all my guests um, when they're telling me about, you know, what they're what they do in their field and stuff. I'm going to say, 
hey, what's the least favorite thing about your job? And what's maybe one of the best things you like about your job? And uh, we'll try to get them to name a few. Um, so, you know, since we're talking about me right now, I'll go ahead and give you mine. Least favorite thing about playing overseas? Uncertainty of your next move. So what, I, what do I mean by uncertainty of your next move? So after the nine or ten months are up, you just played a season. Usually you'll have a couple months as an off season. It's usually in the summer. And that's just a time where you don't really know what's going to happen next. You're kind of waiting for your agent to tell you what's going to happen next. Um, you know, where your next contract will be, um, how much money you'll make, uh, what your, you know, conditions will be. You kind of have an idea of what you think you deserve, but that doesn't always come true. You know, you can ask anybody else that plays, you know, professional basketball. It's, there's just a lot of anxiety that comes in, you know, those couple months when you're, when you're in the off season. And I think, uh, I think that is definitely a rough time, uh, for all of us. Um, and the second thing that I would say is negative about playing overseas And probably the most popular thing that most of you have probably heard before is late payments. So payments do not always come on time overseas. I'm sure in the NBA, they're always on time. And I'm sure in your job, you know, in the States, they're always on time. But overseas, that's not the case. Sometimes they're late. Sometimes they, I don't want to say sometimes they don't come at all because it's not common. But occasionally you'll have a team that doesn't pay for some reason, gets backed up, you know, has a, some type of dispute with the player, you know, and a lot of Americans take take teams uh, to court. And basically you fight it out there, you know, but that costs money. You know, the courts are not so efficient, not so fast. And uh, it also costs you time because uh, they're a little bit slow. So that's a real issue. You know, if you're a a grown man or a grown woman that has a family, a mortgage or a car payment and, you know, your your paycheck in February is one month late, you know, what are you going to do? So that does happen. That is an issue. Uh, Those are two, you know, negatives. Um, about playing overseas. Another negative that you hear sometimes is uh, there can be a little bit of loneliness over there. You know, you're away from your friends. You know, you're missing birthday parties, Christmas, friends' weddings. You know, so you do miss some stuff over there. You know, but you make friends over there and you try to kind of create your own life there too. Um, but you can definitely, you know, feel a little bit, you know, lonely over there at times. What's up, bro? Um, so some good things about playing overseas. Um, you have virtually no expenses. So like every dime you make, you can kind of save and invest or do what you want with the, with the money because, you know, your housing is paid for your flights, um, you know, visa paperwork, um, and a, a lot of teams pay for your food. Uh, this is a good year for me because I have two meals a day with the club that I'm playing with. So that helps me out a lot. Um, Sometimes you get a car, you know, it all depends on your contract, but almost all your living expenses that you would be, you know, paying for if you were, say, working for, you know, I don't know, an accounting firm in a metropolitan metropolitan city in the States, um, you know, all your expenses, like your living, food, all that is covered when you're playing overseas. So that's a big deal. And that's a really good thing. And another good thing about playing overseas that I think a lot of guys don't think about is there's a lot of um, possibility to, for possibility for promotion and upward mobility. Um, you know, like if you have a good year, you can make huge jumps in this business. I mean, I've seen guys like start out in really lower leagues and in two years they're at the top leagues. So you can make really big jumps, um, you know, get big jumps in pay raises, um, which you can't really do as well, you know, in the corporate world here in America, but in professional basketball, especially um, across the waters, you can definitely, definitely do it. Yeah, guys, that's kind of like a 10 minute rundown of uh, playing overseas. You know, it's a, it's a different life, but it's a good life. I love it. And uh, most people that you talk to that do it, love it. Um, obviously like playing basketball is something most of us grew up loving. So we're, everyone's glad that we're still doing it and, you know, you can make a living doing it. So you know, I'm really liking the experience. Um, another thing I'll say too is, you know, you get to live in some beautiful places. I've lived in Spain, Portugal, Bulgaria, Luxembourg, Africa, you know, so I've seen some really cool places. So playing overseas gives you the ability to kind of travel on someone else's dime, if you will, you know, you're kind of traveling the world and yeah, you're not, you know, going sightseeing every day, but you know, you get a great sense of culture, you know, meet people, um, languages and all that 
um, something that, you know, a lot of people don't get the opportunity to do. So definitely grateful for that part of it as well. So like I said before, you know, that's playing overseas in a nutshell. Um, you know, I hope I explained it well. I know I was talking quick, but uh, I wanted it to be kind of a shorter video. So um, next time I'm on, you know, I'll have a guest and we'll chop it up about his or her life, uh, his or her journey.